and this is a random random video just a thought I had uh, I got this from uh, reading over some comment sections uh, in one of my videos but um, this is a what would you call it a um, a general pointer in the rhetoric department to my fellow reasonists <laughs> those of you who are not unreasonable or um, you scientists you know you people that believe in science I'm talking to you so um, this is just it's it's a it's a minor point of contention and it's just a way to, to use your words a little bit more carefully so as to be less confusing um, regarding the Big Bang Theory okay and I, I'm not an expert on this subject you know I'm a pretty smart guy I've read a lot of books uh, one of these days, I hope to relay all the beautiful details of that in a in a beautiful project, which you know, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, that's okay. But uh, so regarding the Big Bang, um, it, it's very easy, and it's you know, it's it's a it's a conversational shortcut to refer to the Big Bang as the beginning of our universe, and in a certain sense, it is. Um, but uh, some people, and usually not us uh, reasonable types, but some people put too much connotation or, or emphasis on that that word beginning, and uh, so I think sometimes it, it 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 would it would be good for us us to to be a little bit more careful with how we use that word, and, and just here's why. Um, and I might be wrong on any of this. This is just my interpretation of the publicly available facts. You know, so correct me if I'm wrong, please. But uh, the Big Bang, um, in a sense, yeah, it's, it's the beginning of the universe as we know it. But as we know it, that's the important part right there. Um, the the events at the Big Bang, uh, that's or the event of the Big Bang itself, that, that is as far back as we are able to reasonably extrapolate from the laws of physics and make reasonable conclusions about the past, past history of the physical universe. That is not the same thing as saying that there was or is or ever will be anything outside of the physical universe or before the Big Bang and before the Big Bang that's a whole other can of worms I think it's kind of part of the confusion here um, don't think of the Big Bang as a beginning in any absolute kind of sense. Uh, rather, think of it as a, a transition or a change of state, you know, from, from one phase to another. But, uh, yeah, as I said earlier, it, it, it is simply the, the point which, when we use our, our knowledge of science and physics and everything to to extrapolate back into the past, it's basically as far back as we can go. Which ties into the fact that we cannot tie together the, the theory of uh, general relativity, which is very successful and has been empirically verified, yielded predictions, all that awesome stuff. General theory of relativity, theory of quantum mechanics, same thing, that's, that's that's a theory, well, not the same thing, I'm about to tell you. Quantum mechanics is a theory of, you know, quantum particles, subatomic particles, and it also uh, has basically been proven. Uh, it, it has uh, yielded predictions which have been verified with incredible accuracy. So in some sense, you know, each of these theories are true. You try to put them together into one big theory and it doesn't work. We haven't figured out, uh, we haven't figured that out yet. And that's why we can't look back any further than the Big Bang.
can say we can we can map back and model the universe to a billionth of it, you know, like a, 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 a fraction of a second after the Big Bang happened. Um, I think it, it might actually be we can we can map backwards until one Planck time after the Big Bang, which I'm not going to try to explain what a Planck time is exactly. I'm not sure I know, um, but in a nutshell, it's the it's the shortest interval of time possible or at least that can be modeled with quantum theory and there's a reason why it's the shortest it has to do with the speed of light you know it, it has a, a, a speed limit and yeah like I don't want to get into that so um, it's a it's a transition that's what I'm trying to say <laughs> don't think of the Big Bang as a beginning think of it as a as a phase change um, uh, and another metaphor I like to use for this situation is a uh, I guess it kind of works. I, I think it's good. Let me know. Let me know. Uh, but when, when talking about gravity, you know, gravity, that's that's a fact. We know about gravity. Uh, but we, we have Newton's laws of gravitation, and that, that is a, a wonderful model. It works really well, especially here on Earth. Uh, the model doesn't work in, in high gravity situations, such as near a star or things like that. So it's, um, it, and it's been replaced by Einstein's theory of general relativity. And here's the thing, it's, uh, it, technically, I guess, you can say Newton's laws are wrong, wrong, because they're not complete, you know, they don't cover all of the situations. Uh, the, the, the way I like to think of it is, is Newton's laws are a subset of a larger set of laws of which relativity is also a part of. And, um, and, and it, you know, so it's a subset of the, the larger theory of relativity that works well given some certain uh, conditions or limitations. And similarly, I would suggest that the laws of physics as we understand them uh, could very well be, in fact, I, if there was a way to collect on this, I would wager <laughs> that our physical universe, the laws that govern that, that is a subset of some kind of bigger theory. Um, and, and, and just as it would be pretty much impossible, or you know, I don't know, I don't know if I want to say impossible, but if I was going to program a, a thing on my PlayStation, you know, there's only so much I can program into there, and, and I'm not going to be able to program a, a complete simulation of the universe outside of the PlayStation, nor am I going to be able to, you know, use code to make a mind that's capable of understanding, you know, and I don't want to use the word mind, that's what I'm, tr I'm trying to get away from that kind of stuff, but uh, the whole point of this video is to say that when someone talks about the, the scope of, of physics or science or, you know, things in the physical universe that are observable, they are not necessarily saying that the physical universe is all that exists, uh, or especially all that we can observe is all that exists. Um, I don't want to get into details here, but we have every reason to believe that the, uh, or very good reason to believe that the universe goes on really far beyond, you know, we've got that roughly 14 billion light year diameter, um, sphere around us that we can see, you know, because that's, the light has to travel to get to us. Uh, and, you know, and that's constantly getting bigger. So I, I think I've gone on enough. Um, so it, it really, it's it's not, it's I'm not trying to correct anyone, but this is just rhetorical advice. Uh, be careful about how you use that word beginning. And if you get into, like, one of these conversations I saw here, just, you know, emphasize that beginning is a conversational shortcut. Don't consider the Big Bang a beginning in an absolute sense, but think of it as a transition, the horizon beyond which we cannot see. So I hope that helps, and I'm going to leave you with a little nugget from T.H. Huxley. By the way, if I provide a quote like this with a name at the end, do not consider it an argument from authority, please. I'm, I'm just giving credit where credit's due. You know, if I have a quote like this, it's just a cool idea that I, you know, happen to agree with. But it's not, it's not a proof of anything or evidence, right? Right. Okay, good. <clears throat>
The known is finite, the unknown infinite. Intellectually, we stand on an islet in the midst of an illimitable ocean of inexplicability. Our business in every generation is to reclaim a little more land to add something to the extent and the solidity of our possessions.